Hi. For some projects, I need to create uh, extremely fast uh, pulses, and I plan to use Arduino to do that. The problem is when I use the command digital write uh, high and digital write low, these commands are very slow, and I cannot achieve really fast uh, pulses. Let me show you what do I mean. So here I define port number two as output, and I will turn it on, and immediately after that, I turn it off. Let me set the oscilloscope at two microsecond, and I pause it. So what you can notice is that, um, so this signal, like this is the on period, which is approximately a little bit more than three microsecond, 3.2, 3.3 microsecond. And then it's off for maybe 3.8 microsecond. So in total, we have basically the period of one full period is approximately maybe seven microsecond. This means we have a frequency of around 140 kilohertz. Now, this is when I use only two commands here. If I want to, for example, turn on another pin at the same time, let's say I turn on pin number three. So I define it as output. And also I do this. So pin number three, I turn it on and then I turn them off one after the other. So if I upload this code and I turn on channel two, maybe I put this one on five microsecond and I pause it. So you can notice that first thing that we, we see is um, this yellow one is channel two, this one is the green one is channel three. So there is approximately five microsecond delay between the two pulses. In many cases, this would not be acceptable at all. For example, if I have a modular multilevel converter and I want to create a lightning impulse at the output of these MMC, I need to turn on these submodules at the same time. So now if I have a five microsecond delay between the gate pulses, obviously I, I will never be able to create a lightning impulse that has a rise time of 1.2 microsecond. So this is something to consider. Digital write command will never uh, help us in this case. The other thing that we can notice is that one full period right now of the yellow signal, for example, is one, two, three, a little bit more than three scale. The scale here is five microseconds, so this is maybe 16 microseconds, which is equivalent to 80 kilohertz. So even with a few lines of code, I already the frequency is already reduced to 80 kilohertz. And if we put more lines, this will reduce to even, even smaller numbers, maybe less than 50 kilohertz, which is not uh, acceptable considering that Arduino has a 16 megahertz uh, processor. Now in this video, I will show you how to improve the, the speed of this uh, pulse production using the Arduino. So the trick is that we have to assign number um, to each pin directly by means of port manipulation. So first I'm going to describe which pins are connected to which ports, and then we will see how to implement it in, in Arduino. Okay, so here I have Arduino Nano, and I mark different pins corresponded to different ports. So port D covers all these pins, port B covers these pins, and port C covers these pins. Now I have made also a similar picture for Arduino Uno. These one are port C, these pins are port D, and those are port B. Same for Arduino Mega 2560. It has many pins and it has many ports, 11 ports totally. Some of these ports have eight pins. Some of them have less pins. Now you can pause on any of these slides and basically write down which pins are connected to which port. And later on, when, when you see the command, you know how to turn on each individual pin using the port manipulation. One thing to mention is that all these Arduinos are not original, but trust me, I have already purchased the original Arduino for many projects at university. So the Arduino project has been supported already by me. Okay, so now how can we use the port manipulation basically to directly assign numbers to, to each pin? So if you want to declare a pin as output, um, like in the setup section of the code, we can do it basically using this command. 
So DDRD is equal to this one. This means pin number two of port D is declared as output. Or here, it means pin number two and pin number four of port D is declared as output. We have to notice that when we use this command, we also set all the other pins as not being output. We do it at the same time, which sometimes maybe is not uh, desired, but I will talk about it in a later part of the video. Now, if I want to turn on pin number two as high, I can use this command. Basically, all the other pins will be off and pin number two will be on. The same way, if I want to turn on pin number two and pin number four, I can use this command. And if I want to turn off everything, I can use this last command. One thing that we have to pay attention is that when we use this command, basically we set, for example, pin number two and pin number four as high, but also at the same time, we set all the other pins as low. Now, sometimes maybe I want to set pin number two and pin number four as high, but I do not want to change the state of, for example, pin number six. This command will not do the job. This actually will change the state of pin number six. So in order to overcome this, we have to use OR or AND command, which I will explain in the next slide. So this is the symbol for OR command. And uh, basically the operation is as follows. So if, if this is the initial state and if you send any, any of these commands, this will be the final state. So if both of these, like initial state and the commands are zero, the final state will be zero. Other than that, the final state will be on. This is uh, how OR commands work. So for example, if uh, initial state is zero, and you send the command as one, then the final state would be one, and so on. So I show you by one example. So for example, initial state of port D is given. So let's say this is the initial state. Pin number five and pin number six are on. And I want to change pin number two of port D to high without affecting the other pins. So I want to make this one on, but I do not want to change the state of these two pins. So what I have to do, I have to use OR command port D or command and what I have to put here is that for all the other pins that I do not want to change I put 0 the pin that I want to change I put 1 and the rest will be also 0 because I do not want to change the state of any other pins only the pins that I want to change the state I I put 1 here now if we look at the table we see that we have 0 here and we have 0 here so the final state would be zero. So we can have zero here. Because we have one here, no matter what we have in this part, the answer would be one. Because we have one here, again, no matter what we have here, it will be one. Both zero, these are zero. Here, for example, I have zero at pin number two, initial state. But because in this case, I put one here, so the final state will be one and so on. So the final state, as you can see, I already turned on pin number two as high, but all the other pin has not been changed. When we declare a pin as output, also we can use the OR command. In that case, we do not change the state of other pins. Maybe they previously been declared as output, and now we do not change it. So for example, DDRD OR command with this will set pin number two and pin number four as output and will not change the state of other pins. If they were already, for example, output, they will stay as being output. So this is how, with using OR command, we can actually uh, turn a pin on without impacting the other pins. Now we see the AND command, uh, which is, this is the symbol. And if we have the initial state here, and if we send the command, these are the final state. If both of the initial state and the commands are 1, the final state would be 1. Other than that, the final state is 0. So as an example, let's say this is the initial state that we have, and I want to turn off pin number 2 without impacting the other pins. So the command that I should use is port D and, so every pins that I do not want to change, I should put 1. The pin that I want to change, I put 0. So now if I apply this, you see that here I have zero, 
with 1, 0 and 1, it gives me 0. Here I have 1, here is 1, we will have 1. Again 1, together with 1, we will have 1. And it moves, we have 2 more 0, and then here we have 1, but because in this case I put 0, 1 and 0 is this line, which is 0. So it gives 0. So basically you can see that the final state, we turn off the pin number 2, but we did not change pin number 5 and 6. The AND command and the OR commands are slightly slower than, than these commands that we have here. These are the fastest one. Then these AND commands and OR commands are the second fast, and after that we have the Arduino digital write command. Okay, so now I'm going to show all of these um, with actual implementation in Arduino, and we will see how fast uh, pulses we can produce using these commands. So we have seen that when we use digital write command, and we turn on two pins and we turn them off after that, we could achieve something like 60, 70 kilohertz. Now we will see what we can get with port manipulation. So first I'm going to declare the two pins um, as output. Actually in this section it does not matter much because the setup part only runs one time. So it doesn't matter even if this, this line is faster than the other one. It does not matter much for us. But anyway, let's do this. So I disable them and I declare pin number 2 and 3 as output. Also I disable them and I use these two lines basically to turn on pin number 2 and 3 and then to turn them off. So let's see how faster the results would be. Okay, so you already observed that the, the output signals are much faster than before. So if I set it on 200 nanosecond, we can see that a period approximately less than 400 nanosecond is achieved. Um, maybe it's 380 nanosecond. Uh, so we have a frequency range of 2.5, 2.6 megahertz. We can observe also that the on period is much shorter than the off period. And this is very clear because um, when we turn off the signal, it has to go back through this loop. And then the loop itself will take some time to, to operate and then comes here. So that's why the off period is longer. If I change the scale maybe to 100 nanosecond, we can see that the on period is actually less than 100 nanosecond. In reality, this is 62.5 nanosecond. It's equivalent to one cycle. Because we have 16 megahertz, so one, um, one cycle is approximately 62.5 nanosecond. Um, now, this one, as I said, is, is roughly 380 nanosecond, 400 nanosecond. We can actually make this a little bit faster. Uh, because this loop command is, it takes a uh, longer time. So if I use a while uh, command instead of loop, then that while command is faster than loop. So basically what happens is that comes inside here and then it enters to the while and now it only operates within this region. And the while loop uh, is faster than the loop. So let us see. So as we can see now, the, the period is shorter. It's actually equivalent to uh, roughly 250 nanosecond. And uh, this 250 nanosecond obviously is equivalent to four megahertz. And I think this is the fastest thing that we can achieve with this um, 60 megahertz chip. Now, if you are only interested in the on period, as I mentioned, that is basically less than 100 nanoseconds. So it's actually 62.5 nanoseconds, which is 60 megahertz. But the full period, we can achieve 4 megahertz. And this shows that basically the while loop takes two cycles. Each of these takes one cycle. So totally, we have four cycles. So 16 divided by 4, we get 4 megahertz. OK, so now I'm going to change this with OR command and AND command. And we will see what we can get. So here I have to put one 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 zero zero one one. The first command means that um, I set pin number two and three as high without changing the state of the other pins. The second command means that I set pin two and three low without changing the state of the other pin. 
let's see what we can achieve. You can already notice that these commands are much slower than the previous one. Now the best uh, timing that we can get is actually nearly 500 uh, nanosecond. So we have two and a half scale, 500 nanosecond, which is two megahertz. So this suggests that the while we have already said, this is two loop, two cycles. This one is three, this one is three, so totally six and two, eight. So totally eight cycles, which is, which is two megahertz. Now, if I go back to the previous one, sometimes we need to make um, equal duty cycle, like 50% duty cycle. Uh, in that case, I can basically add a delay after turn on. So the delay command is this one, one way to put the delay. So let me, I put only two cycle delay. Each of these uh, adds one cycle. So I said that while loop, uh, it's two cycle. So this one operates, then I put two cycle delay, and then it's off. It goes also through two cycle delay because of the while loop. So totally then I would get a 50% duty cycle actually. So let's see. Yes, now you can notice that basically turn on period is equal to turn off period and it's totally we have uh, 400 nanoseconds, which means we have a frequency, um, it's, it's a little bit maybe less than 400, approximately 400 nanoseconds, which is a frequency 2.5, 2.6 megahertz here. One thing else that we should notice is that in any of these cases, when we assign the pin value directly by port manipulation, we see that the two signals are really happening at the same time. So the amount of delay between the two signals is very small. As I mentioned, this becomes very important if you want to uh, turn on multiple switches at the same time to create a high voltage signal with high rise time. Uh, so we can see that with port manipulation, we actually have very little delay between the signals and this can be used to, to drive multiple switches at the same time. Okay, so we get to the end of this video. I summarize the results that we have found and put it on this slide. You can basically pause here and look at the results uh, with more uh, detail. Now in the next video, I'm going to do the similar thing for Arduino Dewey. Arduino Dewey has 84 megahertz processor and the commands that, are, that must be used to, to assign a pin to high or low are different than the commands that we use here. So I'm going to cover those commands and also we are going to check um, by measurement to see whether we can achieve faster pulses using Arduino Dewey. Okay, bye.